Hello everyone, this is Dr. Glenn Fox. Let's talk about the esophagus, stomach, and spleen. This is a fairly typical superficial view of the contents of the abdominal cavity. So the anterior wall has been removed uh, and one of the most striking features that, uh, that we can see here is the liver occupying space in the, uh, the right hypochondriac and epigastric regions. It's being retracted here ever so slightly. And that's giving us room to see the abdominal part of the esophagus. The abdominal esophagus is leading itself into the stomach. Uh, the stomach uh, has two very visible features here. Uh, the first is the greater curvature, and that starts here at the cardiac notch, which is approximately there. And we can follow that greater curvature all the way over to about there, which is where the pyloric orifice would be. Um, the lesser curvature starts at the esophagus and wraps around down this way, comes to that point. That's the angular incisor, and then goes over to the pyloric orifice there. And so um, we can see both the greater and the lesser curvatures of the stomach there. And as you know, the, uh, the greater and lesser omenta are associated with these curvatures. And so we'll have um, the, uh, the gastrocolic ligament. That's kind of coming down here and spreading out over the, uh, the intestines. It's richly imbued with uh, adipose connective tissue. And it's wrapping back up around to the, uh, the transverse colon. So uh, you can call it the, the gastrocolic ligament. Uh, a lot of people also call it the omental apron. Those are used synonymously. In terms of the um, lesser omentum, uh, which runs between the lesser curvature of the stomach, and the liver. Uh, there are two uh, peritoneal ligaments. Between the lesser curvature of the stomach and the liver here, this is the hepatogastric ligament. And then between the duodenum and the liver, so this area there, that would be the hepato duodenal ligament. And the hepatogastric and hepatoduodenal ligaments are contiguous, um, so they form a, a solid sheet there. We can also see, um, just peeking out here in the left hypochondriac region, the spleen. Here's a, uh, a view of just the esophagus and the stomach. So here we can see there's quite a bit of probably thoracic esophagus there. And the anterior wall of the stomach has been cut to and reflected away. And we can see folds here. These folds are rugi, specifically gastric rugi because they're of the stomach. So because the stomach is an expansive organ, the more that it expands, those folds of mucosa become less plentiful uh, when it returns back to its, uh, its typical size, then those, those gastric rugi reform. Coming from the pyloric part of the stomach, uh, this has been cut here away. And we can see within the pyloric sphincter. That's a, a congregation of smooth muscle that halts the progression of chyme uh, between the stomach and the duodenum. And small amounts of 
of chyme are ejected from the stomach into the duodenum for further digestion and absorption. Now finally, what you're looking at here is, is quite a large view of the stomach. So this here is the abdominal esophagus, and I'll just outline. Here's the greater curvature of the stomach. It's been cut there. Here's the lesser curvature of the stomach there. And let me switch colors on us here. Um, coming down through the esophageal hiatus along with the esophagus, you can see here is the anterior vagal trunk. The vagal trunks are formed from the vagus nerves. So the left uh, vagus nerve is the predominant supplier to the anterior vagal trunk. There are some fibers from the right there. And we can also see some of the posterior vagal trunk coming down through there as well. Now, those are heading down towards um, the celiac plexus, and we can see, uh, let me outline this in red so as not to be confusing. Here are the branches of the celiac trunk. So there's the splenic artery, and then there's the left gastric artery, and then there's the common hepatic artery. You can see it all sort of arising like a beautiful flower. And we know that there is a paravascular plexus associated with the, uh, the celiac trunk here. And we can see, just flanking here, this is one of two celiac ganglia. And these ganglia are the preaortic ganglia into which the thoracic splanchnic nerves are going to come and synapse. And there will also be fibers from that posterior vagal trunk that will run through there. And then those fibers are distributed along the paravascular plexuses out towards target organs. So we've discussed the, uh, the abdominal part of the esophagus, the stomach and its features, as well as the, uh, some of the autonomics that pertain to the foregut. Thank you very much for your time.